This is the Samsung Galaxy M33 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. The adhesive tape in between the camera lens needs to be peeled off, revealing a Phillips screw underneath. Next, the plastic cover, which is covering the connector for the fingerprint reader, needs to be removed. Once the cover is removed, the flex cable can be disconnected. At this point, there are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen. And then we need to run it along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There are numerous antenna flex cables on the back housing, including the NFC antenna which is located here. On the other side, there's a layer of graphite film to help transfer heat. There's a metal bracket which is holding the fingerprint sensor to the back housing, and the loudspeaker is located on the bottom. Once we have access to the battery cable, we need to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate and remove the screws in the back housing. At that point, you disconnect this flex cable from the main board and the subboard, and this flex cable connects the screen and subboard to the main board. Then you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cables back through the openings in the mid frame, and reassemble your phone. There are two coaxial cables on the main board and subboard that need to be disconnected by popping them off. The front facing camera can be disconnected and removed. Here's a better look at the 8 megapixel front facing camera. There are two Phillips screws which need to be removed. One is holding on the main board and one is holding on the subboard. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel main lens, and a 2 megapixel macro and depth lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The connectors for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, as well as the two other camera connectors. There's a secondary microphone on the top, and there's some graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film is peeled off, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor. Here's a better look at the processor with the thermal paste removed. The subboard can be lifted up and removed. The charger port is located here, and the headphone jack is located next to it. The primary microphone is located on the other side in between the charger port and headphone jack. So when it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs to help us pry it off. So we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the sides of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 6000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed and the film is peeled off, we have a better look at the copper heat pipe which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and it's held on with some adhesive. The flex cable for the volume keys is located here and it's held on with some adhesive as well. And the repeat speaker is located on top and that's also held on with some adhesive. So if you need to replace either of those, you'd have to just gently pry them off. And there's a small thermal pad which sits in between the motherboard and the midframe, as well as two liquid damage indicators, 
which are these white stickers located on the midframe. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.